at LSU, excellence is expected. Six national titles in their bags. For a chance at number seven, they must win today. Meanwhile, Oregon State has been down this road before. They're looking to return to the championship series for the first time in a decade, and they need just one win to do so. The fans are riled up and ready. They've been lined up for three and a half hours to get into this one. It's a rematch, number four LSU, number one Oregon State from TD Ameritrade. And the boys in purple in an odd position for their first time in a long time. They're the underdogs. Yeah, the Tigers win today, baby. To do that, they would make history, something that Oregon State is trying to do. This could be the most dominant season we've ever seen in college baseball. And the Beavers, with just three more wins, would be national titles for the third time. The LSU Tigers get a showdown with Oregon State. Grand slam and the first one ever at TD Ameritrade. Here's your throw. Dropped it home and we're tied. What a play by Rutschman. This ball is driven deep to left field. A free run home run gives him a huge lead. Welcome to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Game number 11 from the 2017 College World Series, and LSU needs to win twice to make it to the championship series. Oregon State sitting pretty at 2-0. Later tonight, 2-0 Florida battles with number six seed and 2-1 TCU. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Chris Burke and Kyle Peterson. we got the band back together, boys. Yeah. And Oregon State's had their band singing all season long. We haven't seen anything like this maybe ever. No, I mean, by the numbers, historically, it's one of the best seasons that we've ever seen in college baseball. And when you look at Pat Casey's Oregon State ball club, they're 56-4, and four, folks. That just flat doesn't happen, especially with the schedule they played during the course of the season. They have not lost a weekend series, won their first two here in Omaha. Twice they've won 23 games in a row. They're currently on a 23-game win streak right now. And Monday night, they scored more runs against LSU than anybody else has this entire season. They're complete, they're balanced, and they're playing really well right now. Meanwhile, LSU has a big game pitcher. His name is Alex Lang. He's one of the best strikeout guys in the game, but for them to win, He's got to get back on his game. Yeah, he does. It's been a struggle in the postseason, but it's nice to send an accomplished pitcher to the mound with your season on the line. This is one of the best pitchers in the history of one of the most storied programs in college baseball. Has a chance today to lead the country in strikeouts and has a chance today to become LSU's all-time leader in strikeouts. It's dominant stuff. And when he's really good and he's controlling the curveball and the fastball, he can get through a lineup three or four times. He has double-digit strikeout stuff every time he takes the mound. And if you're Oregon State, you're going to find out early whether he has his best stuff because when he comes out and he's sharp early, that's when you know Alex Lane's going to pitch deep into a ball game. And that's what Coach Paul Maneri is hoping for in this one. Both bullpens have been fantastic thus far in the postseason, both for LSU and for Oregon State. The Beavers, number one with a bullet all season. They breeze through the regular season, the Pac-12, and they have yet to lose in the postseason. Oregon State, a win away from playing for a championship. Another beautiful day for baseball here in Omaha, Nebraska. TD Ameritrade, four seed LSU, one seed Oregon State. Mike Rooney's down in the field. His task to start this thing off, Runes, put in perspective just how great this season has been for the Beavers. Yeah, Tom, I don't know how we put a 56 and 4 college baseball season into perspective. So let's try football. From 2009 to 2012, Nick Saban and Alabama football won three national titles. Their record in that four year span? A paltry 49 and 5. I'm not saying these Beavers can beat Alabama in football, but they certainly look ready to make college baseball history. If they can win a national title, they'll have the best winning percentage of anyone who's ever won a national championship in college baseball. And without a loss, it'll be the longest win streak to do so. They put the ball in the hands of Jake Thompson today. He is undefeated on the year, 14 and 0, with a 1.84 earned run average. Fourth round pick of the Red Sox this season, but coming off of a no decision. Nobody has won more games in the country than Jake Thompson, and he struck out 114. Here's his scouting report. Stuff solid, and it is a huge arm. Up to 96, curveball for a slight 
for a strike slider to finish. So two different breaking balls. I think the key today is can he keep his composure? You guys saw him against Cal State Fuller. He won great yeah. in that one. And I don't think you really saw the real Jake Thompson that we've seen during much of this entire season. He's 14-0 with a 184. What we saw the other day hasn't happened very much this entire season. Thompson that day against Fullerton to start this College World Series oh. issued a leadoff walk and then a three-run home run in the first. Starting off better here to Kramer Robertson with the first pitch strike. Robertson with the new Duke going. The gold locks flowing underneath the purple helmet. And he torches one to left field on a line. The numbers aren't good from Kramer Robertson, but he's hit some atom balls this week. Yeah, it's been rough. Just one knock in the College World Series, but there have been multiple lineouts, and that ball was scorched. Let's take a look at our Capital One batting order for this LSU team, which is second in the SEC in batting average and third in home runs. Zach Watson has been outstanding. The freshman leads them in pretty much every offensive category in the postseason. Five home runs in the NCAA tournament. Just a true freshman and plays one of the best center field that you will see. Corners are in for Cole Freeman, and he looks at a first pitch strike. Senior from Mandeville, Louisiana, just two for 11 here in Omaha. This is an LSU offense which leans on its speed, especially at the top of the batting order, but Robertson and Freeman, a combined three for 24 this week. Tough to run when you can't get on base. And Freeman lifts this one to left. Jack Anderson with a long run. Two down. Great crowd on hand inside the ballpark already. They're still lined up around the block outside to get into this one. Yeah, the Tigers. It feels like a fall day here instead of a summer day. 72, 73 degrees. Wind's blowing out. Ballpark has played a lot smaller this year than it has in years past. We've seen already more home runs in this College World Series than any we've seen at TD Ameritrade Park. And still at least four games to go. First pitch strike to Antoine Duplantis. That's a good sign right there from Thompson because we didn't see a whole lot of that the other day. Two-seam fastball forced Duplantis to back off the plate, and that action brought it back over for a strike. Boy, Again. Yeah. Seven pitches from Jake Thompson, and that's the first one that's missed the strike zone. Oh. Alex Lang waits to take the mound for LSU. We may be in store for a pitcher's well, duel today, just inside the Duplantis, two and two. Would that surprise either one of you? No. No, not at all. I mean, you look at, if you're LSU, you've got, you've got your guy on the mound. If you're Oregon State, you have one of your guys on the mound, but one of the most consistent arms in the country all year. Hold up, hold up. Best ERA in the country for this Oregon State staff. Led by their pitching coach, Nate Yeski. Duplantis battling a little bit. Came in hitting 323. 40 points higher here in the College World Series. Four fastballs in this at bat to Duplantis. Everything has been inside. And then the breaking ball for the first time. It's a 1-2-3 frame as Jake Thompson looks to be back on his game. LSU scoreless in the first. The Beavers come into the play. Be in good company. Yeah, the only thing missing is a pretty girl sitting here next to me. Kissing up on me. And I got a spot waiting on you. So be wild, be. It means bring yourself up. No score after a half inning today in Omaha. 
Number one Oregon State coming to the plate. They'll face Alex Lang. Big time right hander was a first round pick in last week's MLB draft. He's from Lee's Summit, Missouri, and the Cubs got him with a 30th overall selection. Lang was undefeated as a freshman. He's 9-5 this season. 142 strikeouts, the fourth most in the country. And his 398 career Ks, second in LSU history. I think the key tonight is to watch for fastball command because Alex Lang did not have it in his first start here at the College World Series. When he does, that big league level curveball gets even better because he can use it in the strike zone, out of the strike zone. Because when Lang is at his best is when he's 0-1, 2 and then can really go to work with the breaking ball. I think tonight, too, he has to establish his pace, get into some kind of a rhythm on the mound, because even though he got LSU into the seventh inning the other night, he never really seemed all that comfortable doing it. Let's take a look at our Capital One batting order for this Oregon State team that is 56-4 on this season and lost only three times in Pac-12 play. Top of the order, dangerous, uh, dangerous Stephen Kwan, followed by the Pac-12 Player of the Year and an All-American Nick Madrigal. Yeah, how about 464 in the postseason? He can do a little bit of everything. The other day against LSU, they started with a bunt base hit and a hit and run. This offense will come at you fast and furious. Talk with Stephen Kwan during batting practice today. He bunted on the very first pitch. He said smart money would be me just taking this pitch but squaring on the first from Lang. Josh Smith is all the way in on the grass at third. I asked him, why'd you decide to bunt the first pitch when you've been taking so many over the course of this season? He said, it's simple. I heard it on the television broadcast. The scouting report was out. If I show 99% of the time, why don't I surprise him this 1%? Well, it worked. He reached on the first pitch. Magical hit and run on the second pitch. He can do that to you, too. Good ground cover by Antoine DePlantis in left. One down. So base is empty now for Nick Madrigal, batting 500 in the College World Series. No surprise there. He's your Pac-12 Player of the Year. He ended the regular season in the top 10 in the Pac-12 in nine different offensive categories. Sophomore from Elk Grove, California, can do just about everything. And I don't know how many... Five foot seven, 160 pounders have been Power Five Conference Player of the Year, but I bet the list isn't very long. This young man right here is as disruptive as any player the college game has seen in a while. He can beat you in a number of different ways. What I love about this Oregon State batting order, and Madrigal may be the leader in this category, is that they have an ability to adapt and change their approach at the plate given on what the game situation is. He might be patient early and mm -hmm. ambush you late. Yes, and, and even though there's not a ton of power, they do have a couple in three and four in Larnick and Harrison that, that scare you. To the right side, snared by Freeman. Yes, what sir. a play. Early momentum for LSU, thanks to the glove work for the senior Cole Freeman. If you're going to beat the Beavers, you better be at your best. And this is a pretty good start for LSU. Alex Lang throwing strikes, and Cole Freeman, you're showing plus, plus range right there as he moves to his left. And let's tag that one, boys. Sports Center top 10, full extension, range to the glove side, and then the athleticism to get up and get the speedy Madrigal at first base. What a play from Cole Freeman. Ball's down. Trevor Larnick looks at the first pitch low. Mark Winters is our home plate umpire today. Not very often we refer to LSU as an underdog. Ball's down. I think it's fair today, though. I think it is fair. Now, I, I think they're evenly matched, but given what Oregon State has done the entire season, given who they have on the mound, but really, I mean, to me, the mound is a push. Mm. I mean, you got ace and ace. Pick one. Both of them have been outstanding. Consistency of this club over the course of the season, though, is, is just, it's unparalleled. Nobody's ever done what Oregon State has done. Ball. And if Oregon State wasn't on a 23-game win streak, we might be talking about LSU as being the hot club. They've won 23 out of 26. That's nothing to sneeze at. They came in the other day. I mean, Oregon State had won 22 in a row. LSU had won 17 in a row. 
Yeah, they were two of the high and still are two of the hottest teams in the entire nation at the end of the season. I think maybe the difference from a big picture perspective is Oregon State was great from day one. Middle of the season, LSU was a very average mm -hmm. team, especially related to their expectations. I agree. Oregon State only lost one game at home all season, and that one was in extra innings. Duplantis rushing over now last moment. Takes it in his glove, a 1-2-3 frame by Lang to match Thompson zero. The Tigers have brought their A game. It wasn't very pretty the last time they played the Beavers. A much better start here. How about Cole Freeman flashing some range and some leather? And you know that gets the pitcher all fired up when his defense steals a hit. Nice frame by the Tigers. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase everywhere. Choose your color, purple versus orange today. Simba approves. Benny the Beaver has moved his way into the stands. He was on the field earlier. Versatile. Working the crowd. Here's Greg Dykeman, 19 home runs on the season for LSU's slugger. And he put a couple on the concourse during batting practice today. It's a good day to hit. A little overcast. The wind's blowing straight out. Cool day. Oh! Mm, you thought that one was inside on the breaking ball from Thompson. So that's the curveball. So everything we've seen up to that point was a slider. And, and if you can't tell the difference in break, just look at the velocity. The curveball's going to be 72 to 74. The slider's going to be 81 to 84. But you'll see both over the course of this ballgame. Like a lot of the guys in the purple and gold, Greg Dykeman grew up as a big LSU fan. Coming to Tiger games since he was a little kid. Grown up in Metairie, Louisiana at a brother Martin High School. Two thousand fourteen Louisiana High School Player of the Year. And a line in the right field. Dykeman on his way to second. Strong throw from Larnick, and Dykeman beats it with a head first dive. Well, KP, they climbed the ladder with the heater, and they tried to go back to that breaking ball. The slider down and in, and Dykeman does an excellent job of dropping the barrel on this one. That's a one iron. Past the first baseman, it's not often you see a ball to the inside of the first baseman go for two, but Dykeman smelled it right out of the box. And then how about the dive into second base that just is. ahead of the tag? That's Pete Rose style yes, right there, Yes, it is. That's folks. where I was going. Absolutely. Attack second base. LSU looks a little motivated here early. Center fielder Zach Watson carrying a hot bat into this one. 385 in the College World Series. Just a freshman out of Ruston, Louisiana. That's an awfully good take right there. Runner in scoring position, a freshman. You know he's all geeked up here in an elimination game. A 1-0 count. He spits on a slider away. It's a very good take, which usually earns you an opportunity to get a fastball here in the 2-0 count. To the left side. Pass to Diving Grenier. LSU's got runners at the corners here in the second inning. Tigers only had two runners in scoring position opportunities in the first meeting with Oregon State. They went 0 for 2. Good start to this one. Pretty good bat by the freshman right there. Takes two breaking balls, gets into a fastball gout, got that fastball, and then just puts it in a spot that nobody can get to. I love the read on second base by Dykeman, too, knowing that he's got enough time to get to third base. You want to make sure that 
They can't throw back behind you and get him at second. It's been up two straight hits for the Tigers here to start the second. Double by Dykeman, single by the freshman Watson. Josh Smith, Smith at the plate, the freshman from the Baton Rouge area out of Baton Rouge Catholic. Going to find his way out of a slump. On the field before the Florida State game a couple days ago, Josh Smith spied a couple of Little Leaguers that were down on the field playing in one of the local tournaments. It's titled the Slump Busters Tournament. He called him over. He said, I need that shirt because I need to get out of my slump. <laughs> Had an RBI single his first at bat. Off you go. The third kid had a Wendy Peppercorn t-shirt. He I didn't say anything that about I that. I like that one. <laughs> Dykeman at third. After a leadoff double and Zach Watson followed with a clean single. Early one, runs always important, that goes without saying. Mm -hmm. But how many runs wins this one? Can I change my answer? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't said it on national television. I'm giving you a chance. I still think three does. I really do. I still think three does. Whoa, he had him, but Thompson didn't pull the trigger. Okay, so here's what I like about that. Too often you see, and you can still do this in college, so often you see that 5-3 to three move, and it looks totally different from when a guy goes mm -hmm. to home plate. This one is close enough that you get a movement on mm -hmm. first base. You could see that action by Watson. But if it doesn't look the same, nobody's going to move. That time, Watson read that Thompson was going home, just didn't have enough time to spin and get it. One and two to Josh Smith. They're playing him with a huge gap in right center, Berkey. Well, this is definitely a guy you got to shade off of. He, he, the barrel gets pretty loose on the backside. That's why you saw him attack him with fastballs early. And they're trying to get a swing and miss on that slider down and in. But if he hits the ball in the air, for the most part, it's going to the backside of the field. Worried about Zach watching at first, who has 11 stolen bases and 15 attempts. Breaking ball's hammered into the seats. That's twice to where I think when the ball left Thompson's hand, he thought he struck him out. Or at least if I was on the mound when the ball left my hand in those situations, you think he struck him out. He threw the breaking ball in the exact spot that he wanted to, trying to bounce it off that back leg. And Josh Smith has wasted two pretty good pitches there. I don't know that that's the best pitch selection to put him away. I don't think it is. I think I, I would elevate a fastball yeah. in. I'd go with that four seamer up. They repeat it, and he lays off at two and two. Why do you say that? I just, again, with the bat path, what we've seen from Smith in the past, he wants the ball down, and I think he does a pretty good job of reading spin. And you saw the way he got ahead in this at bat was with gas up in the zone. I think you go back to it right here. Up the middle, and Smith comes through. Slump busting indeed. Dykeman has scored, and Watson will end up at third. It's the pitch I would have called. It's the pitch I would have thrown. And he just spoiled it. Because yeah. after, after fouling off two very good breaking balls, it's good execution. You're trying to the throw the fastball up and in, and Josh Smith just got the barrel to it. I mean, that is a really good job of hitting right there. Foul off two tough breaking balls and still have hands that are quick enough. You can shoot a ball up the middle and give the Tigers a lead. I love how he shortens his arms here. Yep. That is a gator arm move right there. And even though he doesn't quite get the sweet spot, watch how short the arms get right here through the hitting zone. You'll see it after he makes his move to get ready. He'll suck those arms into the body, keep them connected to the chest, and does just enough to get that ball up the middle. And the Tigers look awfully good early on here, boys. 
Bo Jordan bats in the seventh spot. Oh. And he shows bunt. We saw this the other day. Bo Jordan had a, a safety squeeze. It's exactly what they've got going right there, too, just to try to push another one across. Junior at a Barb High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Twin brother Bryce on the team, but out with a torn ACL. Back in Baton Rouge watching. There's the squeeze. No play at the plate, and LSU has a 2-0 lead in the second. So the safety squeeze LSU was making, so we're going right here. We're going to watch this base runner. And watch how he's going to read the bunt here. See it down and go. And really, there's nothing you can do to defend yeah. it. Watson runs too well. The placement was perfect. And at that point in time, as a pitcher, you just got to take your medicine and get an out. Here's the other thing I like about that. With a guy on first base, now you got somebody else in scoring position. So you score mm -hmm. a run, but it's not like now the bases are empty. You then push somebody else, in this case, Josh Smith, up into scoring position. Look at that. Yeah, Chris Reed's going to do push-ups for every run scored. He's going to look pretty buff if he can keep this going. Huh! Put you on that plane, KP. I'm already on it, Bert. Okay. I'm already on it. Got up this morning. And ate bacon. <laughs> and it was awesome. It was really good. Thought about push ups and then came to see you guys. Into center field, off the bat of Papirski. This one all the way back to the track for Kwan. Tagging from second is Smith. And LSU has a runner at third with two down now after Michael Papierski gave that one a ride. His second half of the season, he has turned into a different hitter. He is dangerous from a power standpoint. Already has one home run in this College World Series. It came from the right side. And offensively, a little bit of a story today for LSU. One run and four hits the entire game against Oregon State. The first time these two teams met just a few days ago. Two runs and three hits in this inning alone. Nine-hole hitter Jake Slaughter to the plate. Just a freshman from Shudrick, Louisiana. It was a 36th-round pick of the Cubs coming out of high school on the first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Oh, that's all. sure if we have any sleeping babies today but if there are any they may be awoken if slaughter catches another one hit a three run home run a couple games ago that woke up young Cruz put four and a ground ball to short that'll close the LSU second Thompson gave up three runs in the first inning last time he gives up two here in the second it all started thanks to Greg Dykeman double and some early hustle. Dykeman hustle into second with the dive, and then the Tigers started rolling. 2 nothing LSU as we go to the bottom of the second in Omaha. Guess what? It's a College World Series, and there's some tailgating going on. Husker fans, LSU fans, Dodger fans, doesn't matter. They're baseball fans, and they're out here to enjoy this one. It's a 2-0 LSU lead against the number one national seed 
Oregon State. The stars are shining this week. Nick Madrigal has driven in four. Alec Fiedo was untouchable. 11 mm -hmm. strikeouts for the Florida Ace. And big game Howie struck out a career-high 12 for TCU. If we could just get Brian Howard to come out of his shell a little bit. Yeah, yeah he's pretty shy. Uh, and the worst thing, we bring him up in the booth the other day, and we get bang, 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 strikeout, strikeout, ground out. That's it. Like, we... I mean, I, I wanted like two or three in. I was going to give my headset. That's what I was about to say. Why didn't you sit by and don't play watch some of it? K.J. Harrison has a grand slam to his name. <laughs> Thus far this week, one of nine home runs on the season. Also homered. Against Vandy's great pitching staff, both Kyle Wright and Patrick Raby had three run home runs in the Super Region. And Lang gets him to pop up. Dykeman comes in to take it away. One down. Tom Hart, Chris Burke, Kyle Peterson. Guys, we've been here for a while already this week. What stood out to you? I like the offense. You know, I think with the weather we've had and the new baseball, I think we're getting a pretty fair game of baseball here. We've seen more home runs this week than we have in, since the BB core and since TD Mayor trade. So I, I like the brand of baseball that's being played here this week. It, it, feels, um, it feels fair. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think that's – and you know what, to be fair, I think last year it did too. But this year there's a little bit more power, which I think is a, is a very, very good thing. Um, and we've also seen some dominant pitching performances. Yeah. I mean, we just showed a few of them right there. We'll see if we see another one as Lang look, looks good so far. But – Power is a good thing in our game. When we got away from it, it was a different environment here. It's added, a, I think, the right dimension to this tournament again. I like it. Well, I'm not sure that it's been limited to this aspect of the tournament. We go oh, back right. to the SEC right. tournament a yeah. month ago when the ball was flying out of one of the biggest ballparks that's in use in college baseball, flying out through the regionals yep. and super it's been regionals the whole season. for the most part. Yep. Really, I mean, home runs are up significantly this year. I think the new ball, I think – we're now deep into the BB core era. I think kids are using wooden bats way earlier than they ever used to. So I think kids are bigger, stronger, and more used to the bat now than ever before. And with the flat seam baseball, we now have gotten back to where the home run is a real part of the game again. It is, but I also think that offensive philosophies are changing as well. Because when it wasn't flying out, it was a lot more small ball. We're not seeing as much of that anymore, which is, I, I think is a good thing. I think it makes the game more complete. I think it's a great thing. Jack Anderson looks at a strike, two and two. Got him swinging. Lang's first strikeout. Five straight retired now for Alex Lang. He just came back through three straight fastballs right by him because it was a 2-0 count to start this one. Then fastball, 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 and that is a four-seamer. Just rear back and mm. let it go. Not worrying about anything moving. Just throw that thing at the bottom part of the zone and let the velocity take over. For Alex Lang, strikeout number one comes on three straight fastballs to Jack Anderson. Mike Rooney, what stood out to you this week? I agree. <laughs> Rooney's never sounded better. The same thing. Malone getting the start in the TH spot, just his 10th start of the season, and he looks at a strike. I can see him. He's down. I'm going to wave to him right now. I can see him. There you are. We're right here. Yep. Okay. Yep. Rooney just gave us a steal sign. <laughs> Hi, Mike Rooney. Hi, boys. Hey! Okay. There we go. We had a power outage. Well, that wasn't the case with the balls or other bats this week. So what stood out to you now you know, that you got your electronics working? Yes, thank you. You know what? I, I, I just keep thinking about Timmy Richards. You know, a senior from Fullerton yeah. could have gone out in the, in the draft, came back for a senior year. He comes here and hits two home runs. And that, that's what college baseball is all about, a, a senior making his mark in a great program. 
I got an idea, and we won't lose power if, if we do this. Runes, you with me? I got gotcha. you. We're going to go solar panels right on the top of your dome, okay? And it's just going to feed directly into the microphone. <laughs> I like it. And I'm on the same program, so I'm right there with you. But it just if we could figure that out, we don't what, have to worry about power. KP, what about this? You're a business guy. Can I get a sponsorship on my dome? Sure. Like, I'm thinking for me yeah. more than the company. I mean, I don't mean to be selfish there. but Absolutely. We can pull that off. I'm in. Good enough. I got an idea. How about some dome black so the batters can see what Alex Lang is throwing? You must be blinding him. He strikes out two in a row. Alex Lang has retired all six that he's faced. Two in a row, and he's doing it with a fastball. Four seam fastballs from Alex Lang the last two times. Struck out Jack Anderson that gets Malone looking. Looks pretty good so far. Florida, it's all about pitching and defense. Got him! Yeah. Rip to the right side. The Omaha kid has done it again. This one is driven to right. It's gone! TCU lives to play another day. They've got themselves in the driver's seat. Now all they got to do is finish the job. Number six, TCU. Number three, Florida tonight at eight. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Since you guys didn't ask, I'll just tell you, my favorite part has been Ryan Merrill from Omaha having another great Amen. series. There's a guy who's had a great career. The glove, Gary Payton, Oregon State great in the ballpark today. Now, see, we talked about standing in on Bob Gibson last night. Mm -hmm. I'd like to play Gary Payton one-on-one. -on -one. Just Why? Get beat 24 nothing. I just want to know what that D feels like. Kramer Robertson, another line shot. <laughs> just mean. shave it. Just <laughs> shave it all off at this point. I mean, it is. He's finding the barrel like every time. I bet he's lined out to left mm. field four times in this tournament. So Those far. are two as laser in, As intense as his mom, Kim Mulkey, is, if she's able to laugh about it, that's a good sign. There is. You can hit the ball too square. And I tell you, if he catches that ball a centimeter lower on the baseball, it's in the bullpen. So you feel good about it, right? No, I feel terrible about it. I'd rather pop up than run out. If I hit it hard, I want to hit. Wait a second. It's but too if, hard. If you're in a slump and you, you're getting bad results and you look bad and you're out of sync doing it, isn't it harder to get out of the slump? As soon as I hit a ball hard, I want to hit. If I'm in a slump and I crush one, I want to hit. I feel worse uh, if I line out because you know how hard it is to square one up. If you don't get a hit when you square one up, now you feel like the game is really not for you at the moment. So if you smoke one down the fairway, hit it through the fairway, goes in the rough, and you lose it, that makes you more upset yes. than slicing one yeah, over. You know how hard it is for me to square one up down the middle. Interesting. Two at bats today, two line outs to left field for Kramer Robertson. The new dude hasn't been much of a help, but at least his coach let him keep it. Freeman goes down swinging. And there's two down. Second strikeout for Jake Thompson. LSU head coach Paul Maneri. Last time LSU made it to the championship series was 2009 when Maneri led him to a national championship. That was the most recent of the six national titles for this program. Took a little family urging to talk Paul Maneri into uh, letting Kramer Robertson keep the haircut. Came back, his wife said, whoa, whoa, whoa you, you, can't, you can't make him change it back. First of all, can you change it back? We're not real sure. We need to worry about it right now. In the end, a decision was made. Let him keep it. Well, Greg Dykeman talked him into it the other day at practice. So we need to change something up. How about you dye your hair? And I asked Greg, I said, well, what'd you do with yours? And nothing. I just <laughs> talked him into it. That's like the guy that talks somebody else into a tattoo. Oh. <laughs> I was on the other side of that my freshman year in college. I was talked into a tattoo, but I much rather would have been the one that talked into. So th here we go. This is... Game one on the left, and that is our current state right there. They knew one thing. They knew he wasn't going to cut it. One, two, three framework by Thompson. He's had two out of three good innings, but the second still his undoing. Two nothing LSU.
There's your bracket laid out by Bats outside. We'll crown a national champion either Tuesday or Wednesday night. And then there were four. Both LSU and TCU need a pair of wins to make it to the best of three championship series. Oregon State and Florida need just one. Pretty simple. Get off to a great start. You have a better chance to win a national championship. 23 of the last 27 won their first two games. Recent history, though, would suggest that it's not absolutely necessary. Coastal Carolina came out of the loser's bracket last season. Kind of thought we'd see more beach balls today. It's early, Tom. It's early. Just had one on a string out there. Did you see that mm -hmm. one? Pretty impressive. Adley Rutschman, to sport standout at Oregon State, also a kicker for the football team. Hey, quick congrats to Andrew Moore made his big league debut last night, got the win. Former Oregon State Beaver. We signed pitch right here at TD Ameritrade in the past. Pretty good way to start. First big league start, first big league win. Nate Yeski in our meetings this morning knew every single detail of that outing. Did he? Oh, he Did was he? dialed in, That's as awesome. you would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, he gave up three, but, you know, two-seamer missed on 2-1 two count and then got him backed up a little bit. Gave up a knock here. Seeger got one on him. Lutchman is the third consecutive strikeout victim of Alex Lang. If you're going to hit Alex Lang's breaking ball, you better be able to get the barrel below the baseball. And watch here from Rutschman. Watch this path as the bat swings really steeply downhill. And really on this kind of breaking ball that's changing planes that sharply, you got no chance to defend that pitch as he swings right over the top of it. And a really good sign if you're a Tiger fan because Alex Lang looks awfully sharp. The book on Gretler must have been we think he's going to swing at the first pitch because that's the first changeup I think we've seen today from Alex Lang. And he went right on right against Gretler right there. Opposite way and fair into the corner. Dykeman will wait for it before grabbing and into second base is Gretler with a stand-up double. First hit of the game for the Beavers. Third double of the College World Series for Michael Gretler. First pitch change up. I got a fastball all over the plate. Good job of hitting just to drive this pitch the other way, Berkey. Yeah, it's pretty nice right there, and especially to be ready after you said first pitch changeup, and then to be able to get the barrel to a 93-mile-an-hour heater after Lang slowed him down. I really like Gretler, and you don't win 56 out of 60 without having some depth in your lineup. A very athletic kid hitting in the eight hole for the Beavers, getting it started here in the third as they're trying to get back in this ballgame. First time Alex Lang will go from the stretch here with a runner on and Caden Grenier at the plate for Oregon State. Sophomore from Henderson, Nevada. Grant, your first team all conference selection out of the Pac 12. Early in this season, he and Madrigal were switching on and off between second and short. About the midway point, Pat Casey decided to be better off solidifying some spots here. So Grenier got locked in at short, and the Pac 12 player of the year, Madrigal, did the same at second. Then also became the Pac-12's -Well, Pac defensive player of the year mm -hmm. in second base. This is a pretty dangerous part of the order right here. 9-1-2. Mm -hmm. Grenier, as you said, the, the Pac-12 first team all-conference shortstop hitting ninth. Got some sock in his bat, too. 
Rainier can do some things. They, they weren't sure they were going to get him on campus. That's how yeah. talented this young man is. Just a sophomore. And for Pat Casey to have the, the Pac-12 first team all middle infield yeah. coming back for another year, to have them play together for three years is awfully special. Well, he might have been distracted when the St. Louis Cardinals called him to draft him coming out of Bishop Gorman High School. He was busy smoking ribs that day. Told the Cardinals no, the money didn't match. Immediately regretted his decision. But then decided, you know, as it's come along, I knew my best decision was to come, and here he is in Omaha. Yeah, I don't think he regrets it too much anymore. Mm -hmm. Got a chance to win a national championship. And any time you can complement the ribs with some mac and cheese, it's going to be a good day, even though he may have thought he missed an opportunity. Mm. His secret to his cheesy mac and cheese is that he can't get it cheesy enough unless you add cheddar soup. Where do you find this? Did you, did you talk to him about his macaroni and Absolutely cheese? I did. Well, it started, I talked to him about his ribs. You always graduate to what sides do you have? And the bottom of the of order is a board. Everybody does. And now Stephen Kwan will come up in an RBI situation for Oregon State. Now it gets interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is, Berkey, you hit on it, and I think it's dead on. Uh, Gretler out of the eight hole. Grenier out of the nine hole. Now you turn this lineup over. But that, that's not your typical eighth and ninth hitter in a college lineup right there. Eight hole doubled on the right field line. Grenier with a great at bat to be standing on first base. Now it just continues. Quan can bunt. We saw that from him last time against LSU. Bunted the first pitch of the game. He's also not afraid to bat with a strike or two against him. You can see how shallow Cole Freeman's playing right here. And he's playing towards first base because they're always aware of that push bunt right in that Bermuda Triangle. And it becomes a very high stress situation. Again, Freeman here, normally in a double play depth, that's a pretty bad circle there, boys. <laughs> normally in double play depth, he would be more in the middle of the field. And he's trying to make sure that he can cover this if there's a push punt in this opportunity. Really, anytime Quan comes up to bat, and you can see Smith, how far he is in front of the base. Smith right here. So LSU having to change up their defense with Quan up to bat. So what's the first baseman's responsibility in a scenario like this? Well, normally you give the first baseman freedom to go get the ball, but with Quan, they are eliminating the first baseman's responsibilities fielding the ball. He is just going to cover the bag, and they're going to lean on Lang and Freeman to get the ball because if Lang has to beat Quan to the bag, he won't be able to do it. Smith in on the grass at third. Quan swinging away, sends it into the left field corner. to plan is deep back. It is off wow. Wow. the pole and foul. Wow. How close was that to getting out? About a foot. It go off the wall behind the pole to the left of the pole? Yeah, I think yes. it was just, just left of the fair pole down the left field line. Oh, that's, no, that's fair, boys. That ball's fair. That is a fair ball. That's clearly fair. That's right on the yellow line. Yellow line is a fair ball. It's not gone, obviously. It hit the wall, but that ball should have been fair. Instant replay is in effect for a handful of plays here at the College World Series. This one's fouled straight back. This is incredible right here. Yeah. You can see the dent when the ball. Well, here's ball the thing, okay? So the, the only pad out there, all of the pad where that hit is fair. Yeah. So if it hits a pad, it's fair. I think that's right. I'm looking back down at it now. Yeah, the whole thing's yellow. This should be a reviewable play. Fair or foul in the outfield. We don't know why they chose not to review it. Full count. Nobody was animated. 
third base coach, Quan, the base runners, nobody on Oregon, Oregon State side fought that call whatsoever. Obviously, Pat Casey can't tell from the dugout. But Casey came out and asked his third base coach if it was fair or foul, and he gave him an answer that satisfied Casey, and Casey went back to the dugout. Into center field. Kramer Robertson back, and he makes the catch. In a game like this, this could be the difference. Wow. A huge difference. Absolutely That's at least one run, if not two. I think it surprised a lot of people because the ball carried so much and so far deep into the corner. According to this, that's not reviewable. Ball must first touch ground or a fielder beyond initial position of the first or third baseman. It didn't do that. I don't think it's reviewable, boys. No, you're right. I think it should be reviewable. If that were a home not. run, ruled a home run or not a home Correct. run, it would have been reviewable. Correct. I would say this today, the misses for Lang are really close, really close. And that's the one thing to watch when you see him. There, there's times, especially the other day, his first start here, the misses, misses weren't all that close. I mean, we were missing in different spots. Today, the misses have been just down or just off the plate. But this guy can make it 3-2 with one swing because Madrigal can turn a fastball around. One of my favorite players to watch in the entire country. Just with the size, how aggressive he is at the plate. And now what? You're 2 0 to one of the most dangerous hitters in the country. It's obviously a Stressful situation with a couple runs on, but it's early enough in this ball game. You're not going to lose the game here on this pitch. If you're Alex Lang, I don't think you need to, to nibble here and end up walking the bases loaded. You've been pretty good with your command. Your stuff is very good today. I think you got to trust your fastball right here and try to make a pitch. And there you go. Nice four-seamer on the outside corner. Good. I thought it was up. I think Papierski made it look a little bit better. And, and this is one of the things that I think he does very well. There's certain pitches you have to go out and get. There's others you let travel. Yeah. Mm. That one he let mm. travel as far as he possibly could. The glove comes all the way back into his body just to try to make that pitch look a little bit better. And that's a huge call. We go from 2 2 to 3 1. And Madrigal feeling pretty good that that one went his way. Alex Lang forced to make another pitch here in a hitter's count. And the base is loaded. Madrigal flipped the bat all the way back towards the dugout. A little emotion here early on between Lang and Madrigal in this big time matchup. How about this response? Yeah, this isn't really Madrigal's MO. He's not known as a fire starter with the other club, but he just stared Alex Lang down and tossed the bat right in his face. Very interesting. Alan Don pitched in this event back in 1983 with Alabama. Lost in the championship game to Calvin Chiraldi, Roger Clemens, and that fantastic Texas team. Let's go, Beaver! And the LSU pitching coach with an early Let's visit to Lang.
Michael Gretler is your runner at third after one out double. Following that, Caden Grenier drew a walk, and after the controversial fly ball from Quan, Nick Madrigal draws a walk, and the bases are loaded for Oregon State and Trevor Larnick. Mm. Oh. It was 93 at the knees, nothing in one. Larnick's been red hot. 11 RBIs in the postseason. Four for nine here at the College World Series. Been wearing the middle of the field out. People have been trying to jam him in because he's a long arm swinger, but he does a very nice job of getting the barrel inside the baseball. 10 game hit streak for Larnick. He's driven in a run in 13 consecutive games, and he commits to the curveball, nothing in two. I know. I, I don't know whether he swung or not, or swung or not, right there. But ask for help on that one. That's a home plate umpire doesn't have to make that that call on the swing. That, that's why the guys are standing at the corners. I just think that's the one where you got to ask for help. Mark, There's enough other things to be watching. Mark Winters is behind the plate. Danny Collins is at third and would be the umpire he would appeal to in this scenario. Well, dancing over at third and Lang stepped up the back of the rubber. The Batter asked for time. He tried to draw a balk and they almost did it. Alex Lang has yet to commit a balk this season. Mm, that was nice by Kapuski. You know when you're catching Alex Lang, especially with runners in scoring position, you've got to be able to block the breaking ball. Excellent job right there by Michael Papirski, not just to block it, but keep it right in front of him. Opportunistic Beaver running game. You know they're looking to advance on that ball in the dirt. Offenses this year with the bases loaded against Alex Lang. 0 for 19. Nowhere to put him. This is a professional A-B right here. You get down early and battle back on some really good takes. They're all running, and it's ball four. Three walks in this inning from Alex Lang, and Oregon State's on the board. You don't need to strike him out 3-2. You don't need to strike him out 3-2. The, the bat starts 0-2, so we're ahead 0-2, and then the last three pitches are breaking balls down and out of the zone. And there's a chance you're going to get a swing, but you don't need a strike out there. You just need an out. First pitch of this at bat was 93 on the outside black at the knees, and it just felt like he was trying to trick him at the end. Instead... Now Larnick standing on first base, and the Beavers are on the board. First pitch strike to K.J. Harrison. He is the biggest power threat in this Oregon State batting order. He has nine home runs on the season, and he put on a show doing batting practice today. Lang delivering his 30th pitch of this inning. Oh, no, no. There's the appeal, and Troy Fullwood says he didn't go. Home run number nine was a doozy for Harrison. A grand slam in game number six against these Tigers. One of the best swings in college baseball. K.J. Harrison 
dealt with some injuries throughout this season, but he can really drive the baseball. Only grand slam in the history of the College World Series here at TD Ameritrade. Harrison missed four games late in the season with an ankle sprain. Sliding against Oregon, a thumb injury catching in the Arizona State Series cost him some of his power. Here's the one-two pitch from Lang. ourselves a real battle right here boys that's a great pitch and a heck of a foul ball by KJ Harrison on a beautiful pitch by Alex Lang a painted four seamer away and he's just fighting for his life right here Lang escapes, he walks in one run, but he strikes out the biggest threat, getting K.J. Harrison swinging. A double and three walks in the inning, but the Beavers can only get one, and Alex Lang strikes out one of the premier hitters in the country. Three in the books, 2-1, Tigers. Week. It's an NL Central Battle at Bush Stadium for Sunday Night Baseball Series finale between the Pirates and the Cardinals. Coverage begins 7 Eastern on ESPN with Baseball Tonight. Sunday Night Countdown also streams live on the ESPN app. Got you, Hart. That's work. good reading. Got you. Done that before. Here's Greg Dykeman to lead off for LSU. And a first pitch upstairs from Thompson. What do you make of Jake Thompson's stuff now that you've seen him a time and a half? Not what the numbers would indicate. And I, I think he's done a nice job here of settling down after a tough second inning, but not quite as sharp as I would have thought coming into this tournament with the numbers that he had. We've got the shift on Dykeman. Sometimes that doesn't bother Dykeman. Georgia tried this against Greg Dykeman earlier this season, and he beat the shift with four opposite field base hits. What do you got on, on Dykeman as a hitter? Next level. I like him. I think he's got a chance to hit 25, 30 home runs in the big leagues. We know the raw power is there. I like the progression that we've seen throughout his career. As Tom said, he's shown the ability to use the backside of the field. And we've seen some of the farthest balls in college baseball hit from him this year. I'd say the other thing I like, and we were talking to LSU's coaching staff this year, he has turned himself into a good right mm -hmm. fielder. And last year, he was not great on the infield. He just never looked comfortable. He looks comfortable yeah. in right field. He's made some very good plays, the arm plays. Because the bat absolutely does. Leadoff walk to Greg Dykeman. He reaches for the second time today. And that'll bring Zach Watson to the plate. 
Take you back to the third inning. Stephen Kwan at the plate for Oregon State. In a ball that seemingly was fair off of the yellow line deep in the corner. But we're told with the umpires here at TD Ameritrade after discussing with them from our television truck that because Oregon State did not ask for a review, they did not review it. If, so if it is reviewable, they need to change the wording of the rule. Because if you read the wording of the rule, it would indicate that it's not reviewable. Here's my other issue. We have instant replay in effect for the College World Series to avoid mistakes. Why should Oregon State should have, to have to come have to ask? ask? Get it right. I just, I mean, w when you look at that pad, the pad is in fair territory. All of it. So if it hits a pad, right there. which it does, ball's fair. You can see the indention clear as day right there. That ball hits yellow. I mean, we'll see the way the rest of this thing plays out, but that's a couple runs. Well, yeah, at least. Come out, come out. Andy Jenkins is the third base coach for Oregon State. Pat Casey came out of the dugout immediately after that and asked if he thought it was fair or foul. And Jenkins must have given him an answer that. Appease Casey to the point where he didn't come out and ask for a review. But I, I, I just don't understand what the stakes so high. We don't, we do not have challenges in college baseball. There is not a red flag that a coach throws out there that will cost him a chance to challenge later. Why should it, the onus be on the head coach of another team, and essentially what would would have been a scoring play if it was ruled correctly on the field, to come out and ask for them to get it right? I think if. The scenarios were flipped. I think if that ball would have gone against LSU, Palmineri would have hopped right out. Just because there is replay all year long in the SEC, I think the SEC coaches are used to asking. Even if they know it's not reviewable, they'll go out. We've seen it all year. Guys go out and just ask. And, and there the, is no review in the yeah, Pac-12. No, no review in the Pac-12. I just don't think it's as natural of a move for the Pac-12 coaches. Oh, no. But we have different rules in effect throughout the course of the season. We don't see instant replay any other time like we see at the level here in the way that it is in play with the number of cameras that we have available to try to get things right. It means more now. Mm -hmm. And we saw it last ignored night. last night in yeah. Louisville in a chance in a play that wasn't reviewable. I think once you get into some significant replay, it's now we're going to have the conversation of how far do we need to go. And I think we're going to see it altered. Hey! Which is After good. this year. Which is good. we got to continue to It was to a good first step to get yeah. there, and I think we need to go a little bit further. Can I ask one more question? You may. At this stage and at this level, why don't we have two more umpires down the line? Okay. That is fair. Yeah, you can ask the question. Yeah, I think we get that one right with one more umpire. We get the to the line. finals, there is. We get to the finals, there's six. I don't disagree with you. I mean, there'd be two or four more guys across the country that would love to spend a week and a mm -hmm. half here. Yeah, about three dozen hands just yeah. went up in the air and said, who do I call? I'd like to be there. Zach Watson lines one into center field. And the throw comes in over everybody. So two aboard with nobody out. And LSU trying to build on this one-run lead. And this is the part of the order it started last time. Dykeman hit a double. Watson followed with a single. And the Tigers put a couple on the board. Now Dykeman walk and Watson with a single. And you got to believe Oregon State's thinking about making a move here. The bullpen is hot. Thompson has looked pretty shaky to this point in the ball game. Max Engelbrecht looks ready to go. Josh Smith has an RBI single to his name. He squares and fouled it off. I don't like it. 
You get a guy who hit a bullet up the middle, his last at bat, first and second, nobody out. I don't think three runs is going to win this game. I think you got Thompson on the ropes. I wouldn't be giving him an out right here. So he strokes this one to center. Quan pushed back. Dykeman was not in position to tag, and so nobody can advance. Is that the right leap, uh, read for Greg Dykeman to get a secondary lead? I think in retrospect it was. Yeah. I think he's out if it goes. Mm-hmm. Normally, the, the rule is nobody out, you go back. One out, you, you're halfway. Bo Jordan put down a bunt last time, a safety squeeze to get Zach Watson home from third. about that play well, I was really going to give him some dude points if he didn't shake his hand but he, he couldn't quite get off camera without shaking the hand how about staring this one down boys hang in there and make a play straight faced it right till the end <laughs> <laughs> he tried came close yeah, he hung in there an awfully long time to third. Beautiful pickup on the short hop by Gretler. Got him. And both runners advance on the ground out. Greg Dykeman forgot yeah. who was on first base behind him. He actually went back on this. Gretler with an outstanding job of charging and throwing on the run. Fortunately for Dykeman, Gretler had to charge hard to get to that bar. He'd have been easily out at third base. Oregon State, where they can do it all. Is there any one area that impresses you most about Oregon State? I really like, even though the, the home run numbers or not what we're accustomed to from saying they've got a complete offense. I just really like the depth of the offense. I think it is quality of bats top to bottom. The reality is you're not going to see it on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, given the ballparks that they play in, the weather for a lot of the year, you just you don't see home run numbers on the West Coast like you do in the Southeast. But we've seen it here. You can see that the power plays here. Michael Papierski had to play for LSU, fouls the first one back. Junior from Lamont, Illinois. Oh, that's in. In on his hands, one and one. This one will find the seats. 
they're coming right after Papirski. I, I th thought this would be a situation where they'd be a little more careful with the freshman slaughter on deck. Papirski has swung the bat as well as about anybody in this LSU lineup the second half of the season. Comes in two home runs and nine RBIs in the postseason. With Jake Thompson, you got a couple pitches to play with right here. I think you pitch him really tough and go for the swing and miss in this situation. Thompson's 1-2, climb the ladder on him, and Papirski goes down swinging. First two reach, but LSU has nothing to show for it. No runs, a hit, and two lapped on. And when we return, Mike Rooney will have a chat with Paul Maneri. Welcome back to Omaha with LSU head coach Paul Maneri. And Paul, Alex Lang throw, throwing a lot of big games for you guys. What have you seen from the big right-hander so far? Well, he, he looked great those first two innings, and then he lost his command a little bit there in the third innings. I thought he, third inning, I thought he threw a lot of close pitches, but uh, fell behind in some counts. And then he, like he always does, he rises up with the bases loaded and made a big, big pitch there to strike out Harrison and kept it close for us. Your offense got on Jake Thompson early. What do you need to see from those guys going forward? Man, that was a great inning. Uh, we had we had a makings of a good inning in that last inning as well, getting the first two guys on, but we just you know couldn't quite get it done the last three guys so hopefully we're going to keep battling them hard and I don't think the score is going to end up two to one though. Thanks Paul. Okay Mike. Hi Rune, thanks so much. Paul Maneri has won a national championship. Pat Casey has won two for Oregon State. And for LSU to get a chance to play for their seventh overall they'll need to beat these Beavers twice in the next two days. Two one lead now to go to the home half of fourth. And how about a little insight into what Paul Maneri was thinking, why he took the bunt off. I guess he didn't like Josh Smith's first attempt. And then what did he tell us? He doesn't think this game's going to finish 2-1. to one. He's feeling a couple runs by each offense in this ball game. Jack Anderson slices one foul. Talking with Pat Casey earlier this week about Jack Anderson, the fourth-year junior from Lake Oswego, Oregon. So if you put a stopwatch on him, if you try to grade his arm, if you look at him from an analytical perspective, he won't profile as great, but he always seems to make plays. One hopper to Kramer Robertson. One down. No flash, hard-nosed baseball. And he's... Use those talents to become a first-team all-conference performer. It's kind of the prototypical mm -hmm. Pat Casey guy right there. One down. Here's Tyler Malone. One for four in the College World Series as Malone gets a rare start today. Papierski with the waggled one for Alex Lang. And it's lined to left field. This ball is carrying. It'll get up the base of the wall. Tyler Malone hustles into second base with his first extra base hit of the season. Again, lineup depth. That's, that's what I'm most impressed with by with the Beavers here in Omaha. It is quality at bat. Anderson just did a bullet at Kramer Robertson. And now Malone with a backside rocket on a fastball up and out over the plate. I love the direction of this swing. Look at that extension through the left part of the field. And that is awfully nice to control the barrel on the backside of the hitting zone like that. And then the juice to get it off the left field wall. Here come the Beavers. First extra base hit in 54 plate appearances for Tyler Malone this year. Adley Rutschman, a freshman catcher, watches the first one miss away.
Runner in scoring position for Rutschman out of Sherwood, Oregon and Sherwood High School. When Adley Rutschman first showed up on campus and started working out with the baseball team, the coaches had to convince him that it was okay to strike out. He was too passive for their liking. And at 6-2-2-0-8, they said, you're not a table setter. You're a dude who drives them in, so swing like it. His dad, Randy, was a catcher at Linfield, an NAIA school in Oregon, where his grandpa was the winningest head football coach there in Linfield's history. Won three NAIA Division II National Championships. So what's more impressive if you're Adley Rutschman? In terms of athletic accomplishments. If he can catch one and hit a home run off of a first round pick Alex Lang or tackling Christian, McCa Christian McCaffrey in the open field. Well I would <laughs> say that he will probably brag more about tackling Christian McCaffrey when his career is over and done. But I think in the situation he tackled him I think it would be more impressive to take Alex Lang. Dude. Easier said than done. He can't hit that one right now. No. Alex Lang gets to a plus counter. He just throws that curveball for a strike. With the path that Rutschman has right now, he just he can't hit that one. The barrel just never gets on plane with the ball. See how above the, the ball that barrel is. And I'm surprised it took him that long to go to the pitch, KP, because they set it up with all heaters. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we'll change the question. What is more difficult, tackling Christian McCaffrey or hitting Alex Lang's curveball? That's fair. First pitch breaking ball into Michael Gretler, who doubled last time he was at the plate. Pierski will give it a look up the line and making the catch around the base runner was Jake Slaughter. No runs a hit, no errors and one left off, uh, left on. We'll see what Pat Casey has to say about the controversial shot off the bat of Stephen Kwan back in the third inning. It was not reviewed because Oregon State did not ask for a review. Mike Rooney will touch on that when he visits with the Beavers head coach. Welcome back to Omaha with Oregon State head coach Pat Casey. In case on Quan's ball down the line, big spot in the game. Were you considering asking for a review there? I absolutely was, and I should have. <laughs> and what were you told when you went out there? I was told it was foul. So, you know, but that doesn't matter. I have the right to ask for a review, and they can deny that. And so that's what I should have done. So it's on nobody but me. Alex Lang, really talented pitcher. What's the plan of attack trying to get to him going forward? Well, you know, we're leaving too many guys on base. You know, we, 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 we're doing a pretty good job of getting some pitches to hit. We're not hitting the pitches that I think we should hit. And then we chase right there. Um, you know, Gretler gets himself in a situation where he chases elevation. He's too good to chase. Can't chase the breaking ball down. And we're doing a good job of that. We're staying off the breaking ball that's down. Um, we're just missing the fastball when we get a chance. Thanks, Case. All right, Runes. Hi, right, Mike. Thanks. Here's Jake Slaughter leading off for LSU in the fifth inning. It's pretty simple as that. You wouldn't expect anything else from a guy like Pat Casey yep. taking ownership of, for not asking for a review. In this scenario, the way the rule is worded, ground and wall are basically the same thing. Anything past those fielders, fair or foul, we judge as it hits the ground slash wall. It'd be a little misleading, even for a Stanford guy. And Trust me, just, this Missouri guy I just read it. I read it too literal. Randy Bruns just came up, who oversees the, the rules here at the College World Series, former umpire himself, um, and clarified that. So in essence, the, the wall is the ground, based on the way that the rule is written. Good pitch. That's three good in a row, by the way. Slider to get a called strike. Fastball, he pumped in there, and then a slider to finish him off right there. Posted in each dugout what is reviewable. 
fair or foul rule number one. The ball must first touch the ground or a fielder. The wall is considered the ground in this scenario, semantics. And it must be beyond the initial position of the first or third baseman. So anything in the infield wouldn't be reviewed. It would be accepted as called on the field. But just to reiterate, a coach must ask for a review for replay for the re replay process to get started. And the moral of the story on this one is if you have any doubt, even if your third base coach tells you it's foul, go out and ask. There's no penalty for asking. No. You don't run out of challenges. There are no challenges. It's simply a request. You just get out there and ask and start digging a little bit. I'm, I'm surprised third base coach Andy Jenkins wasn't more upset. But at this point, I think, you, as Case said, he's got to go out there and ask. I'll throw this out there, too. And not to throw anybody unduly under the bus, but the call was missed on the field mm -hmm. live. Right. And there are multiple people that could have had a look on that. The third base umpire, the home plate umpire, both would have had a look down the line if they would have continued to watch it. And that seems pretty simple. It's pretty surprising. Nobody was animated. The hitter, the, the umpire obviously missed it. Third base coach, none of the base runners saw it. I'll tell you, the guy's pretty animated right now is the guy in the bump because Jake Thompson um, starting, starting to, to find it yeah. now. We're starting to find it. The, the curveball or the slider is real. That was another slider right there, and that is a quick, quick fifth inning. Two strikeouts and a fly ball out to center. And Jake Thompson, who has 14 wins over the course of the year, is getting better as this game goes on. Halfway home, it's 2-1 LSU. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. First of two today. Later tonight, TCU in Florida. And the Horned Frogs would need a pair of wins against the Gators. Try and make it to the championship series. LSU needs to knock off Oregon State twice. I'm not sure that hat fit the kid. <laughs> Alex Lang misses low, 1-0. Oh. Caden Grenier in the nine hole for Oregon State. Oh. First team all Pac-12 selection. This is an Oregon State team that gets better as the game goes along. And you talk about changing your approach and identity at the plate. It's about one through nine can do it. They can be in such a wide variety of ways. In this College World Series, slow starts, big finishes. And a breaking ball into right. This will push Dykeman back, racing all the way back to the warning track. One down. And to me, that, that stat speaks to just how competitive this lineup is. The first time through, they're filling you out, trying to recognize release point and stuff. And the second time through, boy, you really have your work cut out second and third time through to get through this batting order. Because once they start to feel comfortable, it is very tough to run through this batting order. Here's Stephen Kwan. He moved into the leadoff spot, game two of the regionals against Yale. And he has yet to slow down after moving up in the order. Shows bunt as he is wont to do. And takes it back 1 0 to Quan. Quan's had a busy, busy week. Got to Omaha, finished up his finals. Had one in oceanography. Another one in plagues, pests, and politics. Really? Yeah. Plagues, pests, and politics. That all seems to go together. Doesn't it? Yeah. That'd be an interesting class. It's like Oregon State and wins. Oh. 
a pair of 23 game win streaks this season for Oregon State longest streaks in school history in a program that dates back to 1907. Two and two. A pair of 23 game win streaks. Mm -hmm. So that would be hang with me on the math here if, if you're talking about a major league season which is roughly three times the length of a college season that would be a 60 game win streak to the right side a little flip from Freeman and there's two down big one tonight with TCU and Florida see if Florida's pitching staff can can continue to be red hot for more coverage of the College World Series including interactive bracket and highlights go to NCAA.com beautiful day for baseball that'd be a little chilly might want to bring a jacket tonight brought one time so smart let's prepare word this morning is this normal weather in no, all in June no. to get a this is cold perfect. front? Like I take this every day. Mild front, I guess I should say. I take this every day. How do you put Nick Madrigal into perspective? Are the Dustin Pedroia comps fair? I think they're close. I don't know that he'll ever hit with the power that Pedroia has. But I think defensively it's very similar. I think Madrigal runs a little bit better. I think the barrel control seems to be in that category and for me more than anything Pat Casey and the history he has and the experience he has and how many great players he's coached when you just hear about the, the way that he talks about this young man from a makeup standpoint and from a skill set standpoint that's really all I need to hear he just raves about Maverick he's not a Johnny come lately Madrigal's been a top prospect for a while and he's been playing with Team USA for years made the US national team for the first time the under 14 squad playing late through the summer in fact throughout high school he never made a class picture in opening day of school because he always had Team USA obligations I'm good with that just draw me in teach well, you just look at the at bats he's had today off Lang he had a rocket in the four hole that Freeman robbed from him and then a Really tough walk. Now he's worked this one three to one. And so you get first rounder here versus Madrigal, who a lot of people are projecting the first or second round next next year. And you look at just how composed he is throughout the course of these at bats, projects very well. Ball four. That's a good pitch. That's a good pitch. Good take three one. But mm -hmm. I think it's a strike. Kramer Robertson will come in and chat with Alex Lang. And I can see where Lang's upset. He threw the high breaking ball last time and didn't get it, right? Mm -hmm. Now he throws the low fastball this time and doesn't get it. And I think that's one of the difficult things. I know playing against Pedroia, one of the hardest things pitching to him, there's no strike zone. And Madrigal right there, that he, you know, Lang doesn't get the pitch up. He doesn't get the pitch down. And Madrigal patient enough to wait it out. Here's Trevor Larnick. Sixteen stolen bases on the season for Madrigal. How's Lang's move? A little long. I mean, Lang stops a running game because of, of how he changes the pace going to home plate, not necessarily because of the move. I was talking to Alan Dunn about this today, just about controlling a running game and, and how it's not necessarily the pickoff. You don't see that many pickoffs, especially from right-handers. You could go an entire career in college and not pick anybody off. But it doesn't mean that you're not good at holding guys on. Those are two very different things. You very looks to the point that base runners cannot get a comfortable jump. You're doing your job. Well, it's been tough for Papierski behind the plate, whether it's on him or the pitching staff. He's only thrown out one of 11 base dealers here in Omaha. Hustling secondary lead for Madrigal and it's a called strike. That was a fake steal. He, he took off and shut it down. I don't know if he didn't like his jump or if that was a called fake steal. But one thing you'll see from LSU, they won't really slide step. Allen Dunn likes his guys to rock and fire. You don't see a whole lot of abbreviated moves from the LSU pitching staff. So what do you accomplish with a fake steal? 
I don't know that necessarily. I think he just shut it down. The, the point would be on a fake steal, sometimes you can get a catcher out of his crouch. And, Which and, they did. Yeah. They still and, got the call. And, and you can see sometimes an umpire miss a call because of that. Sometimes you're just really trying to speed up the pitcher and speed up the defense. You get the middle infield moving, and the guy hits a backside ball. There's a lot of things that you can accomplish with that. One thing's for sure, if Madrigal's on, he's going to let you know he's out there. Jake Slaughter holding it. Here's the 1-1 one, one from Lang. Nope, another throw over. LSU as a team only has two pickoffs from any of their pitchers all season. Gilbert has one and Walker has one. Yeah. But why no slide step? Some pitching coaches just don't preach it. You see that from TCU too. They don't have many guys that slide step. Unless the pitcher Amen. comes in there wanting to do it. Right here, you get to hit her, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Especially with, with two outs. Second like pitch that. out. I don't like that. I don't like that. I, I don't mind it 0 1, but I, I don't like it 1 2. Now you're to 2 2. You've already got him in a 1 2 hole. Uh, just try to bury him and finish it right there. We've seen two pitch outs in the course of this at bat. I don't mind the first one, but the second one, he fought to get to a plus count. Now you gave it right back to him. And if I'm mad with all, I'm going 100% on this pitch. Blue. No way he's pitching out here on 2 2. You know his swing and miss pitch is the breaking ball. Taking off right here. He's itching. There he goes. And it's tip foul. You got a hitter you believe in that's going to protect you if it's a fastball for a strike. Anything out of the zone, you feel pretty good about taking the base on. Perfect time to steal a bag. Madrigal is one of those guys that you can come to the game and watch no matter what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You can watch him play defense. You can watch him at the plate. You can watch him in between pitches. You can watch him run the bases. And you can learn something from him on every pitch. And so right there, if, if you're Madrigal, you, you go at least another half step. I know that wasn't Lang's A-plus move. But as you said, KP, it's a pretty long arm. Definitely not the quickest feet you'll see. And none of those picks have been close. a chance right there. It changes everything. Instead of standing on second base with a 3-2 count and a chance to tie the ball game up, for whatever reason, Madrigal doesn't pull the trigger, and he'll be in motion here on a full count. But, man, if you're Pat Casey in Oregon State, you sure would like to have him in scoring position here. There he goes. Gets a big strike at him. It's the sixth of the game for Alex Lang. Madrigal's walk a non-issue, despite the fact that Lang had to lose some extra work to retire Larnick. Five innings in the books. It's a one-run game in a must-win game for LSU. Center fielder Stephen Kwan, part of a key play in this one. Oregon State got a run in the third inning, but they could have gotten a lot more. With two men on, Kwan sent this fly ball deep into the left field corner here at TD Ameritrade. It was a fair ball, but it was ruled a foul ball. Danny Collins was running down the third baseline to try to get a look. Everybody missed it, and Oregon State did not ask for a replay. If they would have, it would have been reversed, and the umpires would have placed the runners in a spot where at least one run would have scored. In the end, 
Oregon State left the bases loaded in the third. Just a bizarre play. It's just hard to believe in that big of a moment on a ball that, that, that is that close. Nobody from Oregon State put up any kind of fight. To the right side and handled at the buckle by Harrison. One down. Bam. Yeah, everybody just kind of reacted to it like it was a Tuesday night in May. Yeah, I mean, you got the bullpen guys down there, too. Like, there's so many different people that you'd think somebody on wearing white would have been jumping up and down on a ball like that. I did like the reaction of Pat Casey. Should have asked. I didn't ask. It's my fault. Now we go. Yeah. Now we go. Mike Rooney. I, I think you guys know it. it was a surprise. Quan almost went oppo deep sauce there. Like <laughs> right. that, that, right. I think the whole stadium was mouth open on that one. Guy has one home run all year. Yeah, and it was pulled down the right field line. In a Pac-12 series late in the oh. year, it's a grand slam of all things. But he's one of those lefties that if you leave it low and in, he might he might get in his happy zone. But he's not going to go oppo. This guy could. Dykeman can hit one anywhere on the field. Or out of it. You may have heard about the home run he hit earlier this season against Hofstra. 486 feet. That cleared the big billboard over the right field bleachers. It lists all of LSU's national championships. Deep sauce. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could set enough. You want to work it in more? No, Runes is a lot better at it than I am. It doesn't sound good when I say it, but when he says it, it sounds really good. Plus, plus lingo? Yeah, Absolutely. Mike's got 80 vernacular. But as a Notre Dame guy, he calls it nomenclature. Mike Rooney, how would you describe Greg Dykeman's power? Yeah, that's... Stupid power, I think, okay. is a phrase that comes okay. to mind. Okay. I'd like a like one day in with his juice, <laughs> just four abs. You'd grow hair if you had that kind of juice. Dykeman flies out to left, two down. We call it the six with Michael Smith and Jamel Hill at Sports Music Movies and More with style and personality. Join them weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern for Sports Center on ESPN. Also streaming live, as always, on the ESPN app. Base is empty and two down for Zach Watson. Eight straight retired now by Jake Thompson. Watson was the last Tiger to reach. Oh. That was on his single in the fourth. And you asked me what my impressions of him were, and I was not very impressed. But... Boy, as he settled down and start to look like a guy that features a sub-2 ERA and an unblemished record. And this one's lined to left field off the bat of Watson. They can't get this cat out right now. He is three for three. So for Watson, three hits today. Yesterday, three hits. Game before that, two hits with a home run. Like sitting in this ballpark, Berkey. Yeah, just this is getting the barrel to a heater and the next piece of evolution for Watson will be able to use the backside right now you can see he is trying to get the head out on everything and that's a fastball up and out over the plate and he barrel hooks it into the left center gap he's really really dangerous right now for the Tigers and much like when Madrigal was over at first base this is somebody you really have to worry about pay a lot of attention to because he can flat fly. Paul Maneri called it electric speed. He's not just fast, he's electric. 11 bags, 15 attempts. Pitch away, pitch out, the throw down his second is in time. And that will close the frame. Adley Rutschman comes up throwing, perfectly played. 
And Watson taking off the base paths. Just because you're fast doesn't mean you can swipe bags. Jake Thompson does a nice job of getting that ball to the plate and sub one, two. Watson with a poor jump, a beautiful throw by Rutschman, retires him easily. And the Beavers are fired up. They're playing awfully good after a rough start. Safe to say, K.J. Harrison's power is back after early injuries to his ankle and to his thumb. He came in with three home runs over his previous seven games. The junior from Hawaii was a third-round pick of the draft of the Milwaukee Brewers. And Pat Casey and his coaching staff came up with a unique way to recruit the islands. Why not have a satellite camp in Hawaii? I like it. Smart coaching. Number one, it's Hawaii. Number two, boy, are they playing some good youth baseball over there right now. We see it throughout Little League all summer long. They are really producing some players. Harrison wasted no time making an impact when he came to Corvallis. 2015 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year in a first-team all-conference selection. He had 10 home runs and 60 runs driven in as a freshman. The cost was being pitched around over the next two seasons. Nice play at third by we'll Smith. Good. Josh Smith, freshman third baseman for LSU, who you will almost assuredly see at the shortstop position next year. So with Slaughter playing first, himself a traditional middle infielder, and Smith, who's going to play shortstop next year at third, LSU defensively on the infield has four guys that are comfortable in the middle of the diamond, yet two of them are on the corners, and Smith has proven to get very comfortable at that over the course of this year. Here's Jack Anderson. Three for nine here in the College World Series after going hitless in the Super Regional, a two-game sweep against Vanderbilt. Earlier this season, Peck Casey described Jack Anderson as the nicest, most polite guy you'd meet and the kind of guy you'd want your daughter to marry. So that was repeated during a Pac-12 network broadcast, and his teammate Zach Taylor decided to tweet it out. <laughs> Suffice to say, Jack Anderson's Twitter followers tripled after that comment. He said, I didn't know that many people watched baseball. Down in the count one and two with the bases empty. Pretty impressed by Alex Lang today. When you think about how disciplined Oregon State's been by not really chasing the breaking ball in the dirt, usually his dominant performances is when he's getting guys out of the strike zone. Oregon State has not really offered that pitch, but the fastball command has been very good. And even when he's been frustrated on a few calls, he has kept his composure and executed well. Ouch. Well, Lang now leads the nation in strikeouts. Alex Fajardo was the leader coming into the game with 146. Lang now has 148. And he's creeping closer to the all-time LSU strikeout record. Was he 11 away at the start of today? Mm -hmm. You know you've had a pretty good run as a program with the history that LSU has, six national titles. If you could have two pitchers by the end of, or the middle of next week, say, who um, mm -hmm. have the program record in wins and the program record in strikeouts. That's Jared Poche nice set the program record in wins. He's got two already this week. And you've had them 
together for three straight, for three years. straight years, pitching one and two. There's strikeout number seven. seen more strikeouts in the fast. I guess we'll find mm -hmm. out right now. More strikeouts in the fastball than we have on the breaking ball today. So there's one on the fastball from Lang. Another on the fastball from Lang. That one looking. Breaking ball there for number three. That was to get Rutschman in the breaking ball. But I think the ability to use the fastball late, even when he misses spots, and he's missed a few today where he's tried to go away and that ball's kind of leaked back in, but the velocity on the fastball has been outstanding. For the most part, the misses have been down. The misses have not been up. That's why now with two outs here in the sixth inning, now three outs in the sixth inning. Alex Lang has given up just two hits, and the big reason why LSU leads it 2-1. 100 pitches through six for LSU's ace. It'll be the bottom of the order. Smith, Jordan, and Papierski for the Tigers. Welcome back to ESPN's coverage of the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Fan Fest going strong. Of double barrel action. You need a righty? Was that Pat Vendetti? Young Pat Vendetti throwing out there? Carlos Cortez. How about this excited fan after the Antoine Duplantis catch? That dude is geeked. Got fans making catches left and right. How'd that feel? Trainer. <laughs> So Josh Smith, who was at the plate, and he drives this one deep to right field. Smith puts it over the bullpen. Oh, Wendy Peppercorn would like that. Those Slump Buster t-shirts must have worked. Yeah, this one's going to be special. Josh Smith is going to be a star for LSU. KP talked about him being the next shortstop, and right now he's showing you some juice on the offensive side, a heater up in the zone, the ability to get the barrel to the baseball and create launch and catch this baseball out mm. in front, and that ball is smashed into the right field seats. How about the power from the little man? Fifth home run of the season for Smith, second in this NCAA tournament. Upstairs to Bo Jordan, 2-0. Jake Thompson hasn't lost a game all season, 14-0. The team is 19-0 in his starts. Sam Tweet on the right, Max Engelbrecht on the left. Into right field. Larnick won't have to move. One down. Talk about creating launch. Watch the path here from Smith. Watch the barrel get behind the baseball and work up through it. Boy, that is a good look right there. That's not a hitter trying to get on top of the baseball. That's a hitter trying to get behind and through the baseball. And on a very offensive day here at TD Ameritrade, that ball sails out of the yard. Tigers are rolling right now up a couple runs and looking awfully good on the mound with Alex Lane. Michael Papierski at the plate. He's 0 for 2. 
Well, we spent a lot of time talking about Oregon State's win streak, and for good reason. They've won 23 in a row for the second time this year. But LSU has won 23 of its last 26. Their turnaround came back on April 27th on a Thursday night in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You may have heard the story that Kramer Robertson addressed the media before the Tigers got on their bus to get to Tuscaloosa. He owned their shortcomings. Well, that day, Sean Ochinko made a change, too. Ochinko was a postseason star in the 2009 team, now an assistant coach and the first base coach. He decided to break out one of his mom's Christmas presents, his Charlie Brown socks. He wore them for the first time that Thursday night in Tuscaloosa, and he hasn't taken them off since when it comes to game day. Whatever works. Yeah. Charlie Brown socks. Sounds right up your alley, KP. Me? I don't wear socks. So the bleached hair seems to have worked as well. It's a dude to homer twice in the World Series back in 2009. Ochinko, in fact, this coaching staff with Nolan Kane and Micah Gibbs all part of that 9 team. Mm -hmm. And Alan Dunn who gave a pep talk to Alex Lang right before the game today. A very very energetic speech. Also pitched in this event back in the early 80s when he was pitching at Alabama. Three and two. I could sit and talk to Alan Dunn about pitching for the entire day. And when he talks about Alex Lang and just the trust and the confidence that they have in him, um, he cannot say enough good things. And you understand why when you see Lang out there in big spots. I'll tell you, though, having uh, Coach Shane Lang for three straight years will make anybody a little bit better <laughs> pitching coach, too. <laughs> He was also raving about the skills of his catcher, Michael Kapierski. Kapierski sends one to first. Harrison scrambles after it, two down. This was the pregame chat between Alan Dunn and Alex Lang. Out in the bullpen in right field. Bow your head, get ready for a good one. The visits are intense. Every time he goes out to the mound, looking guys square in the eye. Ready? Ready. Matt Yeski, the Oregon State pitching coach, will come out and take the ball from Jake Thompson. He has yet to lose this season, but he's on the wrong end of a 3-1 score right now. This week, it's an NL Central battle at Bush Stadium for Sunday Night Baseball, the series finale between the Pirates and Cardinals. Our coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN with Baseball Tonight's Sunday Night Countdown and is also streaming live on the ESPN app. Pirates six games behind Milwaukee, Cardinals five games back of the Brewers. And Pittsburgh going into the series tonight trying to snap a seven-game losing streak at Bush Stadium, including three one-run games in April. Of course. Why not? Interesting. Oregon State's bullpen has been just about perfect in the postseason. Max Engelbrecht, the first reliever out of there, the senior from Seattle. Beavers' bullpen in the NCAA tournament is 2-0 and with a save and has yet to allow an earned run. They got Thompson off the hook against Fullerton in his last start. Engelbrecht's numbers are I mean, almost laughable how good they are. 16 appearances, he's 3-0 with five saves and a .48 ERA. 18 and two-thirds innings, he's given up eight hits, one earned run, walked three, struck out 18. Rain. 
Change, glove, spin, throw. Bam. That was close. It ended up off the glove of Harrison. Grenier had to go a long ways just to get to this ball because to start, he is shaded in the six hole all the way to that side. Far from playing straight up, but watch Grenier in this spot right here. I mean, if you're playing straight up, he's a good five to ten feet to his left. Instead, he's got to go a lot further to get there, and he still almost made the play. Slaughter can run, can actually really run, and that's the only reason that Grenier couldn't throw him out. But that was uh, that was pretty impressive, mm -hmm. Chris Burke. There's a reason I think Madrigal can play shortstop. In fact, play shortstop very, very well. But this kid is really talented at that position. Here's Kramer Robertson. Pulls it to the left side. Sprawling stop by Gretler. And that'll close the frame. Time to stretch in Omaha. And LSU has stretched its lead to two thanks to Josh Smith. Yeah, big insurance run from the freshman. Gets the barrel to heat her up and launches it into the right field seats. It's all Tigers right now. LSU Oregon State ongoing right now. Tigers need two wins to get past Oregon State to make it to the championship series. And tonight, TCU and Florida. Horn Frogs need a win to face another game tomorrow. What do you got for the Gators tonight? Jackson Coar on the mound. And Florida, from a talent standpoint, probably the most talented starting rotation mm -hmm. in the country. Coar will be 91 to 95. One of the best change-ups in the entire country. When he struggles, it's with fastball command. But when it's right, it can be very good. And Mitchell Traver going for the Horn Frogs tonight, who's battled injuries for what seems like yeah. forever for TCU, but has worked himself back into a position to have a moment like tonight. And you talk about Jackson Kowar stuff. Mitchell Traver's got some real stuff, too. He'll get yeah. it up there to 95. He's been up 95 late yeah. this season, yes. Adley Rutschman leading off the seventh for Oregon State against Alex Lang, who's thrown 102 pitches. Lang's season high is 125. That ah. came against Mississippi State on May 18th. Tough play and yes, tag applied tag. by tag. Slaughter. Right That's an Troy Fullwood all over it, one down. So Zach Lang, Hess, sorry, I'm, Zach Hess is up and just kind of playing catch. He's not fully getting warmed up right now. You would think that if you're LSU, you get Lang through this one, and if it's quick, maybe send him back out. But if it's not, I would think that's it for Alex Lang today. You give the ball to Zach Hess and. If you're LSU, ideally a six out set. Here's Gretler. And Lang paints the corner with 91, nothing in one. Ask you this, Alex Lang going to throw what looks to be 110, 115, maybe 120 pitches. If LSU is able to win today and able to win tomorrow, and they find themselves in the championship series. Is is he still in play? Wednesday. You think you bring him Wednesday, back on four? It'd be major league start. It'd be major mm -hmm. league rest. Yeah, I, I think Wednesday he absolutely would be. I don't think he would be before that. Same for Jake Thompson. You could come back with either one in what would be game three of the finals. There's Smith. Two down. A good game all the way around for Josh Smith. Alex Lang, second pitcher in the last three decades with three eight strikeout games in the College World Series. Stanford's Jason Young, the only other.
I guess what's even more remarkable about this performance by Lang is the fact that he had allowed 12 earned runs in each of his last oh, no. three starts. He'd been far from sharp coming into this one. He didn't. I can't say he didn't look himself because he did look himself in his first start here at the College World Series from a competitive standpoint, but from a command standpoint, he didn't. Today, he had everything. Really just lost it for one inning, walked the three guys in the third, but it led to just one run and got the big strike out of KJ Harrison with the bases loaded at the end. Other than that, Alex Lang's been dominant the entire afternoon. And the poise to not be afraid to walk somebody with the bases loaded. And then the ability to execute and get the, the most dangerous hitter in the Oregon State lineup out with the bases loaded. That, that's the turning point in this game so far is his ability to pitch with the bases loaded. And KP, you called it when it was going on. Even though he gave up a walk, he still has not given up a base hit with the bases loaded. In 0 for 20. 0 for 20, 20 the entire season with a base. That's, that's what opposing hitters are against Alex Lang with the bases loaded this year. Caden Grenier is 0 for 1, batting in the 9 hole for Oregon State. You guys seeing any drop off now that Lang's at no. 111? No, I'm not. No, I think he the way usually he usually don't. I mean, he carries his stuff yeah. really well late in the ball games. I think the way he's looked this inning, I wouldn't be surprised if they sent him back for the 8th. I agree. If he gets Grenier here, I think he will come back out. He did. Eight Ks for Alex Lang. He hasn't allowed a hit since the fourth inning. And as we go to the eighth, it's LSU on top of Oregon State, three to one, in the game that the Tigers must win to keep their season alive. Come on now. Gas on the corner, Alex Lang, folks. You're seeing the best he has to offer. The dugout's fired up. Star rising to the occasion. The NCAA College World Series is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back every purchase everywhere. Alex Lang and LSU holding on to a 3-1 to one lead here in the eighth inning. Paul Maneri, pitching coach Alan Dunn, and Alex Lang chatting between innings here in Omaha. He's come back out. I would be very surprised if he's not coming back out. His season high is 125. He's at 112. Well, no. Cole Freeman at the plate for LSU. You bring him out and one base runner, you take him out? Not necessarily. No, but if the pitch count starts to get up, I think that's where you're a little bit more worried. But if you're LSU, you got to think about two things. One, clearly, first and foremost, you got to win this ball game. But if you win this ball game, the less bullets that Hess uses today mm -hmm. means you may have a chance to go back-to-back -back days with him. So if they can get through this and Zach Hess only has to throw an inning, he becomes much more of, an, of a reliable arm tomorrow. Even with the Rick Wyatt thing, Vaughn haircut. Antoine DePlan is coming to the plate. Nobody throwing in the LSU bullpen. Hess is throwing straight gas lately. Duplantis is 0 for 3. Sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. Earlier this year, tied an LSU school record with a six-hit game in the Friday night contest against Georgia. Freeman, 19 stolen bases. There he goes, and Duplantis fouls it off.
TCU fans lined up, ready, raring to go. They've got Florida tonight in the nightcap. They need to win tonight to force a deciding game tomorrow. Crowds have been fantastic all week here in Omaha. Runner goes again, pitches low, rushing with a short hop pickup, a strong throw. That was sensational. Oh Goodness, is that some kind of arm? This Oregon State coaching staff is raving about Adley Rutschman. And offensively, there's, there's still some steps to be taken, but this is a big league ready arm right now from behind the plate. And it's not the easiest of pitches to throw either. He's going to get out and get it first, takes it on the short hop, and then gets rid of it in a hurry. Plenty of time for Grenier to get that tag down. And now to Madrigal, got in front of it, and quickly two down. And he is now thrown out. Freeman and Watson by a mile at second base. Watch the hands and the feet. Pick it and release it and then the gun to get Freeman by plenty. So on that hands and feet, okay? I mean, first and foremost, you got to pick it. But as he's picking it, as he's doing that, the feet are getting in a yep. perfect position to throw the baseball. I mean, you got to get a clean grip and have the arm strength to get it there all in one motion. That's a big league play right there. Opponents oh. are 0 for 4 on the base pass against... Adley Rutschman here in the College World Series as Greg Dykeman looks at a strike. And we don't get to see this club as much as we see some of the teams in the southeast throughout the course of the year, but it's not an accident. You win 56 out of 60. You got all the pieces to the puzzle, including a shutdown catcher. Well, Rutschman coming out of Sherwood High School in Oregon was originally recruited as a pitcher. He threw up to 96 off the mound, but had some arm issues, wanted to be an everyday player. He had catching in his background as well, and looks like he made the right choice. Hold on. Cool to hear Pat Casey talk about how he juggled football mm -hmm. and trying to really perfect or at least work on the craft of catching and receiving especially. They knew he had the arm strength. But they were worried about could he really control a pitching staff. No, 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 no. Dykeman strikes out to end the frame. Lead off Walker race thanks to the throw out by Adley Rutschman. He's an 80 hugger too. It'll be the top of the order two up for Oregon State. Quan, Madrigal, and Larnick. LSU leads Oregon State 3-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the eighth and the ace headed back out. Let's take a look at tonight's Capital One Cup impact performance. Mr. Lang's been pretty good tonight now. Ace of this LSU staff came onto the scene two years ago when he was a national freshman of the year. And since then, Alex Lang has stayed as consistent as maybe any pitcher in the entire country for the past three seasons. As it stands right now, he's the national leader in strikeouts this year. Eight on the day for Alex Lang as he heads back out for the eighth inning here. Hundred and twelve pitches for Lang, thirteen off of his season high. Top of the order to deal with, starting with Stephen Kwan. He's shown Bunt to start every at bat, but has yet to offer. And he does it again. Zach Hess is on the bump in the bullpen. Top five hitters in the Oregon State batting order, 0 for 12 with four strikeouts. No leadoff batters have reached today for the Beavers. To the right side, Freeman showing great range, one down. Paul Maneri is out of the dugout. This might be it with Nick Madrigal, the Pac-12 Player of the Year, due up. And Maneri is not going to get talked out of it. After 115 pitches, Alex Lang will be done. He'll be in line for the victory if this LSU bullpen can hold it for him. Do you agree with the decision to get him after 115? 
Yeah, I'm just fine with it. But I think what you said is dead on. He's not going to get talked out of. That's your mind is made up when you come out of the dugout, and there's no reason to wait because you know that Alex Lang, being the competitor that he is, would have tried to talk his way into staying in this ball game. But he has pitched another outstanding ball game. Seven and a third gave up just two hits. The only run was a leadoff double that he walked in. But besides that, Lang was masterful today. LSU fans will give him a nice ovation. He deserves it. Alex Lang getting congratulations from Nolan Kane, part of a national championship team in 2009, and he put LSU a little bit closer to what would be their seventh. Going to have to beat Oregon State twice to get the chance to play for it, so the handoff to Zach Hess, 6'6 freshman out of Forest, Virginia, and a big-time arm. He is developed in one of the top relievers in college baseball. That's 95. Hess was a starter to begin the season. In 19 appearances as a reliever only, he's 4-1 with a 1.69 with 43 strikeouts and 26 and two-thirds. He is an adrenaline, adrenaline junkie. He is a high-energy guy, 1-1. One and, one. and he's facing the Pac-12 Player of the Year, Nick Madrigal, who's reached base twice with a pair of walks. So why go to Hess here instead of leaving Lang back out there to face at least one more? So three at-bats from Madrigal today. Hit the ball right on the button his first time, then he walked the next two. Yep. I like the move. I don't want anybody reaching base. And Alex Lang's already given you 115 pitches. If you get into the finals, you're going to go back to him in, in game three. You knew Hess was going to see the mm -hmm. ball. Game. The question was how many outs would you need out of there? Now you only need four more. He can do, I don't think he does this intentionally, but if, if he can figure out how to do this intentionally, that little cut right mm -hmm. at the end of 90, 95 miles an hour, there's not too many humans that can do this. First throw this hard, but then secondly, watch the late, and it's not a ton, but it's a little. Late action on that ball just cuts off of the bat. Just a freshman. Kid that began this year fighting for potentially the third spark third spot in this starting rotation has now emerged into a dominant closer. Looking for his third save of this College World Series. He wasn't supposed to attend LSU. He had originally committed to Virginia Tech. His dad, a longtime college basketball official, Carl Hess, who's worked numerous Final Fours, for decades worked ACC games. ACC refused to renew his contract. He was done being an ACC official. The family really wasn't fond of him staying in the Atlantic Coast Conference as a baseball player. So Hess reached out to former Tennessee coach Rod Delmonico. Where do you think would be best for my son to get him ready for the pros? Two answers you got back, Florida and LSU. LSU won the sweepstakes, and now they got something special. Yes, they do. 96 with a little cut Johnson on the outside edge. Yikes. Hess has five outs here in Omaha. All five have come via the K. Make it six. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Zach Hess. And the Tigers three outs away from forcing another game against Oregon State. It's been all about the pitching for LSU today. Pretty good call to the bullpen. Punch out of Madrigal, Larnick down swinging. The Tigers are fired up, and they are three outs away from pushing this to the last game. Number six, National Seed TCU. Three seed Florida going at it tonight. Mitchell Traver will be on the bound for TCU. Jackson Kowar is undefeated at 12-0. He gets the ball for Kevin O'Sullivan's Florida Gators. 8 o'clock on ESPN. TCU needs to beat Florida today to get another game against them.
How about the haircut? All in on that. A little Rick Vaughn special once you become the closer. That's pretty special. If he can find the glasses, he'll have the Halloween costume nailed. Well, he's got the stuff, and you can see there's a, a level of discomfort from Oregon State. Madrigal, I haven't seen him look that uncomfortable in a bat this entire series. California Penal League on the left. Mm -hmm. How'd you get there? <laughs> Stole a <the> car. <laughs> I wonder if Dykeman talked him into it too. Talk Kramer into the Goldilocks look. Zach Watson is five for seven against Oregon State here in Omaha. Good hair, bad hair. They've got it all in the LSU dugout. I don't know why we'd go to Mike Rooney to talk about hair, but that's what our producer is telling us. Rooney, what do you know about follicles down there? Yeah, Tom, appreciate the setup there. The um, I'm apt to hate hair, actually. You're spot on. But I got to tell you, Kramer Robertson's hair, it's pretty glorious. I mean, it's really, it's kind of intimidating, if, if you will. We had to tell Paul Maneri at our meeting this morning, this was after he got talked into allowing Kramer to keep the blonde looks, that it really wouldn't be possible to dye it back to black on such short notice. It took him a few hours to get it that blonde anyway. But, Berkey, you brought up a great point. If you try it, maybe you end up with some tiger stripes. Yeah, I thought it would have been a, maybe a cool attempt to see if he could get it back. And even if he failed, we might end up with something really special. And before everybody jumps on Maneri, that might be the look, <laughs> and drops the fuddy-duddy label on him. Paul Maneri's issue when he first saw Kramer Robertson's hair two days ago in the dugout wasn't that he did this. It was he assumed he had done it on his own. He didn't know about the wild thing haircut. He didn't know about the other guys who had dyed their hair. And I guess a, a uni is a uni, even if it's a bad uni, and that was Maneri's thing. We're all one team. And they immediately point up the fact that Kramer hadn't had a ton of hits in the series. So it just goes back to if he was like 12 for... 14 in the series. I think I don't think Coach Maneri would have had any issues with it, but the fact that he was struggling and he thought he was trying to bring attention to himself, he cut it, he cut it off quickly until he found out the whole story. Rennie, what do you got? Well, it's not like Kramer Robertson's not a repeat offender in the area of overswag. I mean, the guy's <laughs> got more shoes than LeBron James. That's accurate. Smith trying to get on. Rutschman's done it again. Well done. It's no fault of Mark Winters. He was trying to get out of the way, but Rutschman had to go through him to get there on this one, too. So you got to find it first, and you got to navigate the home plate umpire. Watch, they both turn around the same way. Mark Winters is trying to get out of the way. Rutschman kind of helps him get out of the way, and Jeffrey makes that play, too. Spins to first base mm -hmm. just to make sure he doesn't have a chance to double anybody off. Probably hoping Watson was going to run. And that's the third ball we've seen him get showing athleticism. The dive in front in game one, the, the ball to the backstop that he caught up against the netting in game one, and now catching that pop up bunt right there. This kid is a special defender. This was game one against Fullerton you were talking about. Yeah, just the ability to get up out of your crouch and take this ball off the dirt. That was an outstanding effort. Not bad for a kicker. One down for Bo Jordan. Berkey, a couple years ago, you saw the Jordan Twins, and you said before they leave LSU, they're going to win a national championship. They're awfully close now, even though Bryce is out with a torn ACL. Why'd you say it? I just believed in what I saw from these two as leaders and, and very productive college players, and 
obviously you're not getting the full Jordan brother effect this year. It's just one of them, Bo, is healthy. But just got the feeling that homegrown kids, that it means everything to put the jersey on, and obviously like the pieces around them, it felt like they were going to win one in their time on campus. Twin brother Bryce and Bo were teammates in a Little League World Series team out of Lake Charles, Louisiana in 2008. State championship baseball team at Barb High School. Also played football together. Identical twins, and when they showed up on campus, Paul Maneri had a hard time telling them apart, so he allowed Bo to grow a goatee, relaxing the team rule on facial hair at the time. The only other way to tell them apart was discovered by their mother, Lori, when she was changing their diaper, diapers, it seems Bryce has a birthmark that's typically hidden on the backside. <laughs> now, there is one more way because this is baseball. They're wearing numbers, right? How yeah, many different, different clothing numbers. items do you have a number on? You've got the helmet, you've got the jersey front and back. A lot of times you'll have it on the batting gloves, the back of the shoes. Is the goatee really necessary? Apparently it was. 2-0 to Bo, who was 0 for 2. Safety squeeze in the second inning brought a run home. That Little League team was honored at Alex Box Stadium back in the spring of 2009. That's when Paul Maneri first laid his eyes on the Jordan Twins. They would sign later on as part of a 12-player recruiting class. It was number one in the country. Zach Hess waiting to get back out there. Wouldn't mind a few more runs. Two and two. Not based on what we've seen from Rutschman in this ball game. I don't think you want to mess with this dude right now. I will say this: if you get the slow breaking ball and you go first movement, I think Watson will make it easily. But if he hesitates just a touch, or you get a fastball up and out of the zone. Rutschman can throw anybody out. Comes home with the 2-2, two -two and it swung on and missed. We call it the six with Michael Smith and Jamel Hill. It's sports, music, movies, and more with style and personality. Join them weeknights at 6 p.m. Eastern for Sports Center on ESPN, also streaming live on the ESPN app. 3-1 to one here, top of the ninth. Two down for Michael Papierski. He is 0 for 3 today.
KP, with your catcher throwing the way he has, at this point in time, you got a lefty on the mound. It's tough to get a good jump. Wouldn't you just come set and fire at home and almost hope they run? I don't understand all of this, to be honest with you, with how much your attention. And I know that Watson can really run, but he's already been thrown out. Ball is down. Was caught stealing would, to end the sixth. I would worry more about the guy at the plate because we've already seen Papierski hit a ball out this College World Series from the right side. I mean, it, it is real power. The wind's going to help him if he gets one. You better not forget about the guy standing 60 feet away. Good one there. LSU needs to knock off Oregon State twice to make it to the championship series. Should they hold on and win this one, they'll run this one back tomorrow at either 3 o'clock or 8 o'clock Eastern, depending on what happens in the Florida TCU game. Peeking ahead to the Oregon State ninth, it'll be Harrison, their slugger, followed by Anderson and Malone. Those three are combined one for nine. Two out walk, and after Ingebrecht spent so much time worrying about Zach Watson, he loses Papierski. And Jake Slaughter do up. Madrigal and Rutschman to have a chat with Ingebrecht. What's this conversation like? All about the signs at second base. What sign are we going to go with? Who's holding the runner on? What are you going to do? Madrigal wants to be able to communicate that to the rest of the infield and then obviously get on the same page with Engelbrecht as far as what they're going to do with Watson at second base. Are they going to hold him? Are they going to let him run? Huh. Most, most, a lot of times, I should say most times, a lot of times with two outs and a runner at second base, you'll just play deep and try to make sure you're cutting off as many balls as you possibly can. First and second base, it's a little different deal because the last thing you want to do is allow a chance for two runs to score in a single. So you'll hold the runner a little closer in that scenario. So last night with TCU as they scored four against Louisville in an inning where they scored, stole third base twice with two outs. If Watson runs, does Papierski run behind him or wait? Well, you're supposed to. And and for me, if I was in this scenario as Pat Casey in Oregon State defense, I would throw behind. I would leave the left side of the infield stand put, and I would send Madrigal to cover at second base and try to throw Papierski out on the backside. It's a huge lead at first by Papierski. It won't matter Stay now. Here. Stay no, here. no, 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 no. This is, no. I disagree with this one. There are times, and most of the times it comes with the front elbow. Where you see the front elbow move in. I mean, this ball, this ball was closer to going behind him than it was missing him on the front side. That's. I think this is. I think this is the wrong call. You got a left-handed slider coming right at you. Where are you supposed to go? What What are you supposed you to hit do? Hit him right on the here? back side of the leg. This hit him is in a, the hamstring. This is a bad call. What in the world? In the college game, you don't have to get out of the way of the ball, but you cannot lean into it. 
one of the rules that umpires use when making this call is did the ball hit you or did you hit the ball? Hit his back leg, didn't it? Hit, hit his hamstring. Hit the back his of his back leg. His back leg, correct? Uh, I think it hit his front leg. Yeah. It did hit his front leg. Yeah. So it almost missed him mm -hmm. on the back side. That, that's... So instead, like of base, that instead of bases loaded and two down, back to a 2-1 count on Jake Slaughter. Home plate umpires, Mark Winters. Time, time, time. Stay here. Stay here. Stay here. You went into it. Stay here. There's ball four, gets his base anyway, and eventually, and off of, uh, off of three walks, LSU has loaded him here in the ninth. And Kramer Robertson has hit some balls hard in this one. He's hit some balls hard all week, but he is just one for 17 in the College World Series. Zach Watson led off the inning with a walk thanks to Engelbrecht. After two outs, Michael Papierski was walked. Slaughter was hit, but left in the batter's box and eventually walked. Kramer Robertson is the senior leader of this LSU team. And Pat Casey showing an awful lot of faith in Engelbrecht here, leaving him out there. He has struggled mightily in this inning, keeps running him out there against right-handed hitters. I know he's got a left-handed heavy bullpen. It kind of lets you know that they're maybe starting to think about the game tomorrow with the fact that Engelbrecht's out there they in this situation. I think they absolutely are, and I think you have to. Mm -hmm. Especially with Zach Hess pitching so dominantly for LSU. Into right field down the line, and this one will find the seats. Or close to it. So we'll do it again. Nothing in tune out of Kramer Robertson. So if it stays this way, if LSU wins this game, I think we will see Drew Rasmussen star for Oregon State tomorrow. Tommy Jim, about a year off of Tommy John. He's had four starts this year. They've used him out of the bullpen already. The decision, and we were going back and forth today with Pat Casey about it, is if you use Rasmussen tomorrow in a starting role, you probably don't have him at all in the finals. If they don't go there, I would think they go to Bryce Femmel, who started game two. For LSU, I would bet Caleb Gilbert. I think that's your best option at this point because Eric Walker is not going to pitch again in this College World Series. LSU needs to win here to force that game tomorrow. It'll be at either 3 o'clock or 8 o'clock depending on what happens with TCU in Florida. A game comes your way at 8 o'clock on ESPN tonight. To the right side, Nick Madrigal, defensive player of the unit Pac-12, takes care of it. And LSU misses an opportunity. They leave the bases loaded in the ninth. K.J. Harrison, Jack Anderson, and Tyler Malone do up for Oregon State. A Beavers team that has six walk-off wins this season. Number one team in the country will face fireballer Zach Hess in the ninth. Oregon State's trying to avoid their first loss since April 29th against USC. That was a 10-inning home loss to the Trojans. They've only lost four times all season. Ohio State got them on February 24th. Washington and UCLA also in Pac-12 play. This is a team that's on a historical run here. They're on their second 23-game win streak. 56-4. and four. And there is a point about... Uh, about halfway through the Pac-12 season where every time you looked up, Oregon State was winning in walk-offs in every way imaginable. Walk-off hit by pitches, walk-off walks, walk-off wild. Every time mm -hmm. you turned the page or logged onto the website, they won another one late at night in dramatic fashion. And you win 56 times, you're, gonna, you're probably going to win it about every <laughs> way you possibly can. That's exactly what they've done. But 
If they're going to do it here, they're going to have to do it against a premier arm because Zach Hess, in the two outs that he got to end the eighth inning, looked unhittable. K.J. Harrison leads off for the Beavers in a mighty cut that comes up empty, nothing and one. Harrison is homered this week, but he's just one for 12 in Omaha. His one home run was a grand slam. Called strike. You're going to get that one. You better just live there. Wow. Hess is electric. He has struck out all three he's faced today. He's struck out every hitter he's faced here in Omaha. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Three straight fastballs against a premier hitter. The last one, 94 miles an hour, throws it right past K.J. Harrison. Not only is it three strikeouts in a row, it's against Madrigal, Larnick, and <laughs> K.J. Harrison. He struck out the three best hitters on this Oregon State lineup. Jack Anderson is 0 for 3 today. And that just missed. Zach Hess has recorded seven outs on the mound for LSU here in the College World Series. All seven are strikeouts. He's also walked two batters this week. Caught the edge one and one. Pat Casey has two national championships to his name. They're trying to get back to the championship series for the first time in a decade. They need to win just one of two against LSU to do so. count in the NCAA tournament Zach Hess has struck out 15 against just one walk he's averaging 12 and a half strikeouts per nine innings pitch payoff to Anderson into left field well hit back is Duplantis it hangs up for out number two Tyler Malone at the plate for Oregon State. Ball. Malone is one for three today with a double, his only extra base hit of the season. Oregon State down to its last strike. Twelve straight Beavers have been retired between Lang and their closer, Zach Hess. but laid off of it two and two <laughs> that was obscene Papierski couldn't even catch it watch this 
But he got on spin rate. That's a borderline strike, and he couldn't glove Lots. It. Lots of spin rate. 2-2 Two -two to Malone. Oh. Upstairs, full count now. But why throw that pitch when the fastball is untouchable? For the reason that he did. He's trying to get a lock-up strike three. It's a couple foul balls off the bat of Malone. He's trying to put him away. Punch out to end the game for Zach Hess. And LSU will live to play another day. LSU had to do was hand Jake Thompson his first loss of the season and snap a 23 game Oregon State win streak. They came in as odd as this may sound as the underdog. They forced a deciding game tomorrow with Oregon State. Seven and a third innings for Alex Lang. He strikes out eight and then hands the ball to that guy. He faced five guys. He struck four of them out. Zach Hess looks the part of a closer right now. It's a five-out save, and it's a winner-take-all tomorrow between LSU and Oregon State for a spot in the finals. Beavers held to a season-low two hits as they suffered just their fifth loss in 61 games. And I'm not exactly sure how LSU's going to get him the ball tomorrow, but if they can with a lead, you got to feel pretty good if you're Paul Maneri because you now have a superstar closing out ball games for you. And how about the LSU pitching staff able to hold this Beaver offense down, which has been red hot. What a performance by LSU as they stretch this one more game. Has through 23 pitches to close this one out. They'll need him again tomorrow. Let's take a look at today's Capital One player of the game. He's standing by with Mike Rooney. This way. With LSU right-hander Alex Lang, Alex, absolutely dominant performance. What did you have going today? You know, fastball command was pretty good. Ran into a little trouble there in the, in the third. I um, mean, that's a good hitting team. They, they laid off some really, really tough breaking balls. Um, so we stuck with the heater today and just trusted it. These guys have five losses. That's the number one team in the country. You just eye to eyeball to eyeball and got it done. What's it take? What's it take to beat these guys again tomorrow? You know, this team's gritty. That we, this, this Tigers team's gritty, man. I've said it all year. We're resilient. Um, so we're just looking forward to the opportunity to play another day in this uniform. How about that freshman closer you guys got? Ha, he's, he's a man. He's he's intimidating. You know, I wouldn't want to get in the box with him. So, you know, turning that ball over there in the, in the, in the eighth to him is it's not a hard thing to do when you got somebody as lights out like him in the back end. So, Well done. Thanks, Alex. Awesome. Thanks. God bless. Appreciate it. The nation's leader in strikeouts gets it done for LSU, a 3-1 to one victory for the Tigers over the Beavers. Stay tuned next for SportsCenter, and stay tuned tonight for Florida and TCU. 8 o'clock on ESPN, and that will decide if we have two games tomorrow or one. It'll either be a 3 o'clock or 8 o'clock start tomorrow for LSU and Oregon State to decide who plays in the championship series. Once again, our final, LSU 3, Oregon State 1. So long for now for Omaha, time for SportsCenter. Good. Just leave me 